Did you know it's actually legal to eat roadkill in some places? As a lawyer, I defend people in court all the time, and it pays to know the tiny details and obscure laws. Here are some of the craziest traffic laws that I've found around the world, including where you can legally eat roadkill. First of all, for the ladies out there, did you know that you could not drive in Saudi Arabia until 2018? They just recently changed the law to allow women to actually get a driver's license and drive in Saudi Arabia. The next crazy law is what's called road space rationing. Have you ever been in a city where you're told that you're not allowed to drive on certain days of the week depending upon your license plate number? It's a thing in a lot of countries, especially in Central America. Essentially because they don't have enough space on the roads to manage the traffic that wants to use the roads, on certain days of the week, license plates that end in certain numbers are not allowed to be on the road. It seems to be a more common use in Central American countries like Colombia, Bolivia, Mexico, places like that. They have big cities where there's just not enough space and they regulate who can use the road depending on the day of the week. Supposedly, it does decrease traffic on the roadways, but coming from America where you can use the road any day of the week you like, it does seem kind of crazy. If you're going to be vacationing down to Hilton Head, South Carolina this summer, beware of one of their crazy laws that prohibits trash in your vehicle. The law is most likely targeting people who kind of have junk vehicles that store junk and garbage in there so they can get eyesores like that out of the community. Another astonishing law that was repealed just recently is from France. France required all motorists to have a one-time use breathalyzer in their car. I guess the theory was that if you were out drinking with friends or at the pub and you had, thought you might have had a few too many to drink, you would bust out your breathalyzer to check yourself before you got behind the wheel. That seems like a great idea in theory. The problem in practice was that drivers could not find breathalyzers to purchase. And so the law quickly, instead of having an actual punishment attached, it quickly became just a warning system where if you were caught without your breathalyzer, the police would give you an official warning to tell you you should have had one in your vehicle. And since it sort of lost all its teeth and momentum, the government has decided to just repeal that silly law. However, keep in mind that France has a very low legal limit for DUI. In the United States and many areas of Europe, the legal limit is 0.08. In France, it's 0.05. Another law from an area that I love to visit is in Montreal. On the island of Montreal, did you know that it is illegal to turn right on red on the entire island? So usually in the United States, at least, you're allowed to turn right on red unless it's otherwise marked. If you rent a car once you're on the island, you may not have really been paying attention to those signs. You could accidentally end up turning right on red on the island. That would get you a ticket. From the other side of the globe in Japan, we have a crazy system of stickers to identify drivers that may be a higher risk for other drivers. The two that are most notable is you have a sticker that you have to display on your car for the first year when you get your driver's license. So a little sticker that warns people that you're a new driver. Then there's also a sticker to warn people that you're an elderly driver. It's kind of a crazy system. It seems like if you're allowed to be on the road, you should be safe and we shouldn't have to give people a special warning to stay away from you. The old joke of why did the chicken cross the road has been around for ages. But did you know in Quitman, Georgia, chickens are not allowed to be in the road. I guess it makes sense if you got a lot of chickens in the neighborhood, it's a hazard for traffic. So you got to make sure if you're in Quitman, Georgia, keep those chickens on your own property. That brings us to our final crazy laws about eating roadkill. Did you know it's legal in some places to eat roadkill? and others, you could actually get in trouble for taking dead animals. Of course, it's probably no surprise to anyone that in West Virginia, it is legal to eat roadkill. Some states have regulations relating to what kinds of roadkill you can pick up, and some states require you to print out some sort of permit, maybe after the fact, or notify the local game department if you do pick one up. Think about the situation where you run into a deer and you kill the deer. The state in some states will allow you to pick up that deer as long as you file the proper permit afterwards to notify the state. And I guess the theory is that if they get wind that, that John Smith is running over a deer pretty much every week all year long, that might be a problem and they'll investigate whether or not this is actually roadkill or John Smith is hunting illegally and then running the deer over with his car. West Virginia takes it a step farther, however. You can go on September 25th to the Pocahontas County Roadkill Cook-Off, where you can sample some delicious roadkill recipes and maybe even bring some of your own. These laws from around the world are crazy, but what if you get pulled over tomorrow, right here in the U.S.? In order to protect yourself from police tricks on the side of the road, check out this video right now. I'll see you over there.